But here's the one, and I mean the one thing that concerns me with this for Georgia, and I'll let this be known right now on Thursday night, I think they're in big trouble. And this is also a really bad timing because as we all know, the SEC championship is only a couple days away. I'm doing it. I'm doing it again. Almost exactly two years ago to the date, I made a video that took over the internet by storm. And it especially took the college football world by storm because it was a big deal. I remember this so vividly just like it was yesterday. On a late Thursday night, I predicted that Alabama wasn't just going to upset Georgia, but they was going to beat them handily. And what happened after that? I remember waking up the next morning looking at the comment section and everybody and their mama was calling me crazy. And that video was made so long ago, I don't even know if I can find it, but if I can, I'll try to pop up a picture for you right here. I got to clarify on this. I didn't just call the upset. I called exactly every single thing that happened in that game. I said that Stetson DoorDash Bennett was probably going to throw an interception or two and Bryce Young and James and Williams was gonna dice up that Georgia defense. And I understand why people was calling me crazy and saying it was a delusional take because nobody moved the ball in that Georgia defense. But the one weakness they had was if you can give your quarterback time, their secondary was somewhat weak and we saw that. And it wasn't like their secondary was bad or anything, but Jamison Williams was on a narrow level in 2021. And to make an extremely long story short here, we saw how the game went, and I do have to say that is probably one of my better moments in my YouTube career. I have a hard time believing I'll ever forget that because that was an awesome moment in our channel's history. And also, for those of you who don't know, I did also pick Georgia to beat Alabama in the rematch in the championship that year, so I had a good year predicting the games. Well, fast forward in time, here we are two years later, and it's seeming like deja vu. Georgia, similar to 2021, they ran the table. They're undefeated and heading into the SEC championship. And also, extremely similar to 2021. Man, this is actually the definition of deja vu. Alabama is heading into the SEC championship with one loss, but also they're coming off of a game in which they probably shouldn't have won in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Remember in 2021, that was the year where Bryce Young and Alabama, they couldn't even get a first down against Auburn, and then they go 99 yards on the last drive and win in four overtimes. Alabama wins a crazy game in Jordan-Hare Stadium they had no business being in, and same thing happened last week. I think you get the point. This year is a very similar scenario to 2021. Heading into this SEC championship, though, I think there is one major and big-time difference, and that's the quarterbacks. You see, heading into 2021, we all knew Alabama had the far better quarterback. The only reason Georgia lost to Alabama in the SEC championship was because Stetson DoorDash Bennett. This year, it's a different story because you could say that Alabama does have the better quarterback in Jalen Milrow, but at least in my humble opinion, I think it's 1A, 1B. I love me some Carson Beck. That dude is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country, and the only reason he doesn't get a lot of love is because he's doing it on a stacked team. I think at this point in time, Carson Beck is already a first to second round NFL talent. For Alabama, we know Jalen Milrow. Ever since that Texas game, he has turned it on, and he has turned into a Heisman contending quarterback. Will he win it? Absolutely not, but he may get a trip there. You never know. But my point is, Jalen Milrow has played great in the second half of the season, and same thing for Carson Beck. And I'll be upfront and honest with all of you. A main reason for me calling that upset in 2021 was because of the difference in the quarterbacks. I knew if the game got into a shootout, and by the way, in which it did... Bryce Young and Alabama would walk out there with a win because at the time, Stetson Jordash Bennett was not capable of winning a shootout. The year after that, yes, he was, but in 2021, no. But although Georgia probably, I think most people would say, has a better quarterback than they've ever had heading into this matchup, no disrespect to Stetson Jordash Bennett, I still think they're in trouble. Make no mistakes about it, Georgia's undefeated, they're the best team in the country, it's not even close. But the difference with this Georgia team this year is their defense isn't as dominant as we've seen in the past. They are great, and I've even labeled them as elite. I believe that, but not as good in recent years. When I was watching the past couple of years of Georgia defense, I was like, man, these guys are suffocating. But this year, I don't see that. I've seen more busts this year alone in Georgia's defense than I've seen in the past three years combined. And to go on top of that, at times, they're not dotting all their I's and crossing their T's. And I know what you're sitting there saying, Matt, what the crap does that even mean? And that's a great question. I have a great answer. It means, number one, there's open lanes. And number two, I see a weakness. I guess I also need to clarify on that. When I say I see a weakness, it just means I think they're weaker than previous Georgia teams. But here's the one, and I mean the one thing that concerns me with this for Georgia, and I'll let this be known right now on Thursday night, I think they're in big trouble. 
And this is also a really bad timing because as we all know, the SEC Championship is only a couple days away. Although Georgia has made it to the SEC Championship unscathed, they have yet, and I can't emphasize this enough, they have yet to play a quarterback that is as elusive, athletic, and as great as Jalen Milrow is. South Carolina, Spencer Rattler, he can't do what Jalen Milrow does. Auburn, well, we know how that goes. They want to run the ball. Kentucky, no. Vanderbilt, no. Florida, no. Missouri, no. That's a pocket passer. Ole Miss and Jackson Dart, he's not a Jalen Milrow. He's not as athletic as Milrow. Tennessee and Joe Milton, he's a pocket passer. Georgia Tech, no. And here we are, Alabama. I love me some Jackson Dart for Ole Miss. I think he's good. I like Spencer Rattler, Joe Milton, and eh, questionable, mediocre at best. But guys, they have yet to play a quarterback even as near as good as Jalen Milrow, at least in my humble opinion. And if you think I'm just hyping them up, have you heard what Urban Meyer has said about Jalen Milrow? Urban Meyer has came out and stated that Jalen Milrow is the most athletic, not just quarterback, but athletic football player in the nation. He said he's a combination of something like Percy Harvin and Reggie Bush playing the quarterback position. And to attest to his point, He's not wrong, and yet again, can't emphasize this enough, that's coming from Urban Meyer. This guy, no, he has no reason to vouch for Alabama. And I'm trying to warn Georgia fans, the biggest misconception that everybody has before they play Jalen Milrow is, oh yeah, he can't pass. I'm going to tell you right now, if you think Jalen Milrow can't pass, or you're even believing that narrative for a second, you've lost your mind. Jalen Milrow is one of, if not the most accurate deep ball passer in all of college football at this point in time. However, when it comes to the mid-range passes and the short passes, not so much. But the deep balls... He's making 9 out of 10 of those. That is where he has killed defenses this year. The deep ball passes and the scrambling, and we'll get to that in just a second. Well, actually, you know what? Let's get to it right now. The LSU game was a turning point in this Alabama offense. They did good against Tennessee, but against LSU, this is when Tommy Reese, offensive coordinator, started incorporating runs for Jalen Milrow, and not even just run plays, but Jalen Milrow himself started taking off out of the pocket. I don't know if the coaching staff told him to start running more or he told himself to start running more. Doesn't matter. He's doing it, and it's working. Against LSU, Jalen Milrow was lethal on the ground, 15 for 23 through the air, 200 passing yards. That was all fine and dandy, QBR of 96. But he had 20 carries for a buck 55 and four touchdowns. Next week against Kentucky, didn't have to do too much or try too much. Still in that game, eight carries, 36 yards, but check it out three touchdowns. That's two games back-to-back -back where he had a total combined seven rushing touchdowns. Then against Chattanooga State Water Aquarium Community College, not going to count it, but against Auburn, take a look at his numbers. Awesome through the air, QBR of right at 90, but check it out. Can't emphasize this enough. 18 carries for over 100 yards. His legs is what's taking this Alabama offense to another level in the second half of this season. And more importantly, in the past three or four games. And what would concern me about that if I was a Georgia fan is you haven't played a quarterback that can run like Jalen Milrow. I would say the closest comparison to at least given somewhat of a rush threat is Jackson Dart, but are we about to compare Jackson Dart and Milrow? I don't think so. And here's the key with that. Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin for Jackson Dart, they do a lot of design runs. When Jalen Milrow takes off, these aren't design runs. These are on pass plays. And although he is built like a freaking tank, he's listed at six foot three. He said after Thanksgiving, he probably gained a couple of pounds. So we'll say 225. He is faster than what a lot of people think. And even in the Auburn game, they put a quarterback spy on him and he was still outrunning the quarterback spy. And here's my thing with Georgia. They got the top tier athletes for him, five stars. But I don't know if their athletes are as athletic as Jalen Milrow. They will have a quarterback spy out there. You'd be delusional not to have one. I just don't know what quarterback spy for Kirby Smart could keep up with Milrow. Let's just say for the sake of this video, though, theoretically speaking, Milrow, he can't outrun the quarterback spy. George has got him on lock, and he's just going to have to pass to beat him. And I know A&M is not the greatest team in the world, but A&M did that, and Jalen Milrow single-handedly beat A&M just by passing the ball. I just strongly believe you would be doing yourself a disservice if you was a Georgia fan to be underestimating Jalen Milrow heading into this game. I think Jalen Milrow is good enough to single-handedly take over this game, make that Georgia defense look silly, and just straight up beat him by himself. Obviously, when I say beat him by himself, he's going to need a little help, but you get what I'm saying. I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. My point is, I think Milrow is the first quarterback, if I was a Georgia fan, that I would actually be scared of. Right now, looking at their schedule... Was I scared of Spencer Rattler? No. Was I scared of Jackson Dart? No. And was I scared of Joe Milton? Heck to the no. But Jalen Milrow? Mm, you might not say you're scared of him, but I mean, he's definitely going to be your toughest test yet. And getting off the Milrow topic here, I also want to address this. What concerns me so much about this Georgia team is similar to 2021. They're not battle-tested. Outside of the Auburn game, Georgia hasn't played a close ball game. 
And that worries me because it's the same thing in March Madness. Why does Gonzaga always get a one seed and they get put out in the round of 16 or the late eight? Because they're not used to playing these close games, so they don't know how to fair out in them. Whereas Alabama this year, they've been battle-tested multiple times, and if this game's close heading into the fourth quarter, it's just going to be another game for Bama. They're used to it. Whereas with Georgia, they got Carson Beck, and I love Carson Beck, but He's not used to playing in a tight game in the fourth quarter. Georgia this year has pulled away from every single team in the second half of the game. Well, what happens this year if they can't do that? What happens if Alabama's lingering around in the fourth quarter and they keep it to a three, seven point ball game? Is Georgia gonna be up for that? I'm sure they will, but they haven't played in too many close games this season like that. If this game's close in the fourth quarter, which I expect it to be, I think Alabama's going to make more big-time plays than Georgia. I do. You just get the sense and vibe, at least I do. Alabama, for some odd reason, has always had Georgia's number. And I'm not just talking about the past couple years. I'm talking about dating back to 2008. Remember when Alabama went into Georgia's home stadium and just beat the crap out of them during that blackout game? And Georgia, every time they play Alabama, dare I say, is a little timid and skittish. And it's not just the fact that I don't think Georgia's defense is going to be ready for this Alabama offense. I don't think this Georgia team is going to be ready for Alabama Saturday. And this could all be for nothing, but at this point in time, this is how I feel heading into the game. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But